Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through legal problem 1541, minimum insertions to balance a parenthesis string. Let's take a look at the problem description first. Given a parenthesis string S containing only the characters open and closed parenthesis, a parenthesis string is balanced if it meets these two conditions. Number one, any left parenthesis must have a corresponding two consecutive right parenthesis. Any left parenthesis must go before the corresponding two consecutive right parenthesis. For example, this one, this one, and this are balanced, and these two are not balanced. And it's saying that you can insert the characters close and open parenthesis at any position of the string to balance it if it needed. Return the minimum number of insertions needed to make S balanced. Let's take a look at a few examples to help us understand to catch all of the test cases. For example, test case one, this one, left and left, right and right. One left needs to correspond to two consecutive right parentheses. So one corresponds to these two. All right, so these two are just balanced out. And then there's one more left parenthesis, but on the right side, there's only one right parenthesis. So we need to add one more right parenthesis, right? That's how the explanation put it. We need to add one more right parenthesis at the end of the string to make this one a balanced parenthesis string. That's why the output is one for this test case. And for this one, one left maps to two consecutive right parentheses. So the output is zero because the given input string is already a balanced parenthesis string. All right, let's take a look at the third one. The third one is given input like this. The first two, they are the right parentheses. So we need to insert at least one left parenthesis in this case to match, to counter out these two right parentheses, right? So that is one insertion. And then here, this one maps to two consecutive right parentheses. So these three characters balanced out, but there is one more left parenthesis left out. So we need to add two more right parentheses in the end to match out the last left parenthesis. So one plus two is three, so that's why it's three. The same reasoning goes to example four and example five. Let's just walk through a little bit longer, a little bit lengthy string to help us un really understand how this balance out really works. Suppose we're given this, this long string. This string has a length of 17, and down below the second row, I'm just mapping all of the indices over here. So the first character is left parenthesis, and its index is zero. This is what it means. Let's see how many insertions do we need to balance out this entire given input. So first, one, two, okay, this is fine. So first, what we found is this one, this left parenthesis balances out the two right consecutive parentheses right? So these three are balanced out. And then we're left with the first left parenthesis. Okay, so we need to add one more right parenthesis to balance out this one and this one, so that this one can be balanced out. So all of the characters, either left or right parenthesis that we need to add to make the original input string to be a balanced parenthesis is added here. So in the end, we can just calculate, we can just count how many additional parentheses either close or open that we added here. Then that's going to be the answer for this one. So then these three are balanced out. Now let's move on from left to right. So here, two left parentheses. All right, but we got two right parentheses here. So these three are balanced out. These three are balanced. You see this one, there's only one right parenthesis here, but there's one more left parenthesis here. So we need to add one more right parenthesis here, right? To balance out these three. All right, those three are gone. Now we have this one and this one. So apparently we need to add one more right parenthesis here so that these three can be balanced out because it needs to be consecutive to right parenthesis, right? Now these three are balanced out. Now. These three are good. One left maps to two corresponding right parentheses. So these three are balanced out. Now we have two right parentheses. That means we need to add one more left parentheses here so that these three could balance out. All right, now we're done. In this case, you can see, as I said previously, we can just count how many additional left or right parentheses we have above the table. That is one, two, three, four. That's why it should be returning four in this case. I see quite a few people are confused in the discuss board of this lead problem. Why this 
input array, the output is four instead of one. So this is the reasoning behind this. It needs two consecutive closed parentheses so that it can meet the definition of the close of the balanced parentheses string. All right, looking at this problem, thinking about this problem, a very natural idea that comes into mind is using stack, right? Stack has the feature of first in, last out. That's going to help us take care of all of the things that can be balanced out where we can just pop them out, right? Anything that is still remaining in the stack, we can take care of them as we iterate through this given input array. And at the end, if there's still, after we go through this entire input array, if there is still anything remaining in the stack, we can take care of them in the end. That's the idea. Let's just put the idea in, into the actual code and I'll explain more as we type in the code. So to figure out all of the possible cases to solve this balanced parenthesis string problem. All right, first, let's initialize a stack uh, the type of the stack is character that's good enough and i think should be the most appropriate for this problem and then what we need is we'll need a for loop to go through to be more specific i'm using a for loop of an integer i so that we can go through uh, length go through this entire given input stream and then we'll use, um, we'll just call it, we'll just call it C, um, as char at I. So there, as the problem states, there are only two possible characters, left or right parenthesis. All right, let's do if C equals left parenthesis, if C equals to left parenthesis, or C equals to right parenthesis. These are the only two possible characters in the given input string. All right. If this is the left parenthesis, let's check. There are also two cases in here and two cases in here. Let's do them one by one. If stack is empty, if stack is empty, else if stack is not empty, if stack is empty, in that case, that's totally fine. If this is a left parenthesis, we can just push that onto the stack. That's it we can add it to the stack, right? That's for this case, we're done. But if the stack is not empty, so there are two possible cases in this branch, right? Which means the stack is not empty. The first case is that the stack contains a left parenthesis. In that case, what we can do is, so we'll just peek. If stack equals left, oops. In that case, we can just simply add one more add one more left parenthesis into the stack, right? Which is going to be something like this, which is totally fine. The second case is that the one that we are picking at, at this stack, it's this case. It has a closed parenthesis. It has a right parenthesis on the top of the stack. In that case, it's guaranteed that there is a left parenthesis here. There is a left parenthesis prior, prior to the right parenthesis. How can we guarantee that? We'll do that in the else branch later on. This is going to be guaranteed in this case. There is a left parenthesis prior to this closed parenthesis. So in this case, can we directly add a left parenthesis here? Can we directly add one here? Can we directly add, because the current, the current character that we are iterating on is a left parenthesis. Can we directly add a left parenthesis on top of the stack? No, we cannot. What we need to do is that we need to insert one more closed parenthesis. That's why, okay, let me initialize one, let's call it insertions needed. Start with zero, let me copy this one. In this case, we need to insert one more closed parenthesis to balance out this these first two. So, and then, we need to stack pop the existing close parenthesis and one more time stack pop the one prior to this which is in left parenthesis and here don't worry about the stack is going to be empty and throw stack an element doesn't exist exception or something that's not going to be the case because again it's guaranteed that there's going to be one more left parenthesis prior on the left side of the close parenthesis and we're going to do that in the else branch. So after this, then we can add this 
close this left parenthesis on top of the stack, right? So we still need to do that. So that means we have popped all of this off and then we add the left parenthesis on top of the stack. All right. Um, apparently this could be further simplified because the stack add C, stack add C in both branches, the, they coexist. So let me just, oops, let me just simplify this move this out of this because both of them need this and use this one instead of else all right because both in both branches we need this so instead of if else we can just put this one outside of the if else and remove the else all right these this is how we can handle if the current character that, that we're iterating on is in left parenthesis. Now let's move on if the current character that we're iterating on is in right parenthesis. So also two cases. First is if stack is empty. The other case is that stack is not empty. So if the stack is empty, that means so that is this case. And right now we're iterating on a right parenthesis. That means we need to add one left parenthesis in that case. So let me just copy this one, insert. So remember, we actually do need to insert this left parenthesis on top of the stack. And then we can add C. This C is a right parenthesis. And in the other case, if the if the stack is not empty, there are also two cases. So first case is we just peek. Again, we peek if the one on top of the stack, so it's not empty. So two cases. The first one is empty stack. Second case, it's not empty, but not empty has two cases. One is that it has a left parenthesis. So if this one is a left parenthesis, so if this one is a left parenthesis and the one that we're iterating on is a right parenthesis in else branch, so we can simply add one more right parenthesis on top of the stack, right? That's it. Because that's going to be the first parenthesis that's going to match out the left parenthesis. In the other case, which is when stack peak equals to close parenthesis, that means we have one closed parenthesis already. So, and we got another one. That means we can balance out the prior left parenthesis. So we're happy in that case. So what are we going to do? We're going to stack in that case, that is going to be guaranteed like this. So then we're going to have one more right parenthesis. So we need to pop, pop the, this one off. We need to pop this one off. And then we'll pop again to pop the left parenthesis off. Boom, pop this one off. Yes. All right. That's the case that we can handle. That means the stack is boom, back to zero or anything else prior to that should have should have been matched. So this is the entire for loop that's going to help us sort out the logic when we it, when we iterate through this string that's going to and the insertions needed, this variable is going to be updated along the way. And does that mean that's going to be finished? No, it's not the case. Again, as I said, after we break out of, the, of this for loop. So we need to check if the stack is empty or not. If stack is empty. If the stack is empty, that's going to be easy. That means everything has been balanced out already. Let me copy this. So we can directly return insertions needed variable directly as the final result because everything on the stack has been removed. That means that after we insert all of the left and the right parentheses, the entire given input string has been balanced out already. But if that is not the case, that means there, there are re some remaining characters on the stack. So we need to take care of that. So else while stack is empty is not true in that case, what we need to do, we need to keep popping everything on top of the stack, off of the stack. Now let's do C stack pop. So again, two cases, there are only two characters we can easily check. If the one that popped off of the stack is a left parenthesis, that means we need to add two right parentheses. So insertion needs to plus two and then 
we need to pop we already popped that one off that's fine and if the one that we just popped off here is a right parenthesis right else that is a right parenthesis that means we need to add one more right parenthesis so and then we need to pop that one off that this pop is popping off the left parenthesis prior to that that is guaranteed again that is the case because we are making a valid stack always and then in the end we'll just return insertions needed that's it now let me hit run code all right accept it let me just hit submit and see all right accept it 100 percent 100 percent um this is this is one way to solve this problem um i believe there are other ways just comment down in the comment section let me know how you solve this problem i'll be happy to see how you guys approach this problem this is just one way again um, i'm using a stack is a very natural way to solve problems like this you keep popping things on top of the stack and stack gives you the first in last out feature which helps us organize all of the characters time complexity of this problem is o n since we're going through n is the length of the given string how many characters say the 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 number of characters is n in this given stream so time complexity is o n and space complexity is o n as well because the worst case is that we are building we're adding all of the characters on top of the stack right so for example this case right um, this is the worst case we're adding all of the five or six left parentheses on top of the stack before we can get anything that means we just add everything on top of the stack and we just break out of the for loop that we go into here that's the worst case so space complexity is o n as well let me know how you guys approach this problem and if you think this video helps you understand this problem please do me a favor and hit the like button and just make that like button go blue i really appreciate it and, and also please subscribe to my channel as i have accumulated quite a few lead code uh, tutorials for different data structures algorithms and also for amazon web services i've so hopefully those um, tech videos could help you understand some problems better again thank you so much for watching hopefully i'll just see you guys in the short few seconds